Welcome back, everybody, to 2KCW. We are fresh off the heels of 2KCW-a-thon. Coming out first, we got some singles action. We got Cameron Neo. Cameron's still quite the young upstart here in 2KCW. There's a lot of promise for this young man. No doubt that we'll see bright things in his immediate future. But in regards to his immediate future, he's got a tough task at hand. Because he takes on the 400 pound Hungarian native. That being Tonga. As I alluded to earlier in our first episode when Tonga made a surprise debut, he was previously in the GAW Academy over in General Mission Wrestling. He took out essentially a competitor who was scheduled for that battle royal, for the Brody Lee Battle Royals, but Tonga saw an opportunity and he took it, and I mean that literally and figuratively. Tonga is a very dangerous man. The Hungarian is not one to mess with. And a dark chill sends down the spine of everyone in attendance. When the red lights come on. When Tonga steps over the top rope. My gosh, you can look at the size difference between Cameron Neo and Tonga. Cameron, I think it's best for Cameron if he just tries to stay alive in this match as best as he can and just let Tonga just destroy him, essentially. Cameron able to sweep the leg and Dragon Screw takedown to the 400-pounder. Speed is definitely key. And on your side when you're facing Tonga, but Tonga, the big man, you know, little agility on his side as well. And the dragon screw and just stepping over the abdomen of Cameron Neo. Tonga may not be the flashiest member of the roster, but he sure is effective, shoots the half. And Cameron able to get the kick out. Quick overhand shop from Tonga, but Cameron able to fight off. And oh my god, the power on display with the shoulder breaker. Trying to isolate the left arm and immediate right cross from Tonga. And a chop and oh man. Cameron, you better run, dude. Quick kick to the Next snap mare. If this is not a typical David versus Goliath battle, I don't know what is, but somehow Cameron is able to hold his own here against Tonga in our opening contest. Later on in the show, we'll also be hearing from the man who was the loser in the world title. Iron Man match, Eric Anderson. As well as some tag team action later on tonight. Back elbow from Tonga. Gut kick and just throwing Cameron across the ring. No absence of malice as Tonga into the other corner. Cameron looking for a gut kick. Cameron able to counter it, falling into the cover. And only a one count still for Tonga in this match.
And Tonga just a overhand chop to the back of the neck and the head of Cameron Neo. And Tonga may be looking to put this match away. Going to go for the full Nelson slam that he calls I'm bigger. Into the cover. And this match is over for Cameron Neo. Great effort from Cameron, but obviously nowhere near enough to take out Tonga. And Tonga's got his hand raised. The referee trying to get Tonga out of the way. Wait a minute. Tonga. Oh my. Come on. Tonga. No. Tonga's insulting Cameron after he's won the damn match. We'll have to see what becomes next of Cameron Neo as we move on to our next match here. Ethan Palmer is in action. Thought he was going to make a big impression in the uh, Brody Lee Battle Royals. Our first episode, but he didn't do as well as he thought. The best way I could describe Ethan Palmer is similar to Sammy Callahan. He has the tools of the trade, but he can be as vile and Disgusting as the best of them. But Ethan Palmer is taking on John Marty, the former Progress tra Progress Champion. Let me try that again. Many members of our international flavor here in 2KCW. John Marty, part of from Manchester, England. I would assume that he's a fan of Manchester United, but that'd probably be a little stereotypical. I don't know much about soccer on a personal level, but I know that both these guys, these have these guys have a bright future ahead of them. I would say John John's future is a little bit brighter again as a former Progress Tramp champion. But Ethan Palmer still with the way he's got to show. Calling an elbow tie up. Goes into the scarf hold. Very technical wrestling being shown here. Dropping the head and now we're back to the scarf hold. Ethan Palmer getting control of the side headlock. Now Marty back into a side headlock. Just wrenching the neck of Ethan Palmer and into a hip toss. Wow, look at the exchange. That was beautiful. Into the knee lift from Marty. Running shoulder tackle to the back of Ethan Palmer. Both these men were not successful in obviously in winning the Brody Lee Battle Royals. They were won by Eric Anderson and the 2K CW champion, Leroy Punch Beef, which is still an absolute odd thing to hear come out of one's mouth, but what are you going to do? Ethan Palmer into the cover. Only one, one count from John Marty. And an escape there from Marty. Quick jab. Working the leg of Ethan Palmer. Marty 
continuing to go to work on Ethan Palmer here. And now Ethan, from a very low angle, able to hit a German suplex on Marty and Palmer singing, bring it. Quick kicks from Marty trying to chop down Palmer. Into a million dollar slam from John Marty. Marty's looking to put this match away here. As he hits the King's Landing. That can be enough. No. Carries counter from Palmer. A swinging neck breaker from Ethan Palmer. And Palmer is looking to. He, he's eliminated. He's removed the top turnbuckle. Which is now gaining the attention of the referee. What kind of underhanded tactics can Palmer do while the referee was distracted? Looking for a low kick. One of the groin, and there's a Peter from Marty. Snap mare. And a bow and arrow stretch here from John Marty to Palmer. Of course, the British style of wrestling, very technically sound as you can take a look at Tyler Bate or Trent Seven or Pete Dunn, British strong style. Spinning uppercut coming up with for Marty. Marty into a northern... Almost looked like an arm trap northern light suplex of sore. That was innovative. To say the very least. And a leg drop. And a diving elbow. From the Manchester native clothesline from Ethan Palmer. Palmer sending Marty over the top rope and a right hand. Knocking Marty out on the floor. And these two now battle on the outside side. Russian bike sweep from Ethan Palmer. Leg trapped in a hammerlock DDT. Onto the outside. A spinning back fist right into the mush of John Marty Palmer sending him back inside the ring not before dealing some extra damage across the face with an elbow Palmer may be looking to put this match away So he was possibly looking for sliced bread that he calls better than you. But he's not quite at that point yet. Well, these guys up on the top row looking for a superplex. And that does more damage to your opponent as it does to you. Of course, that move made, ba made famous by Cowboy Bob Orton. Marty's got Palmer perched up on the top turnbuckle. There's a running clothesline from Palmer. Marty able to get back in this match. Send Palmer into the corner. Back elbow for whatever it was that Marty had in mind. Palmer had it scouted. Now Marty returning the favor. And here we go again into that million dollar slam. And Marty might be looking to put this match away here over Ethan Palmer. Oh, counter by Palmer. Knife edge chop. Of 
Going corner to corner, another nice edge chop, and these two just coming to blows with each other. Standing suplex from Ethan Palmer. And Marty's still willing to fight. And now Palmer looking for what he calls the napalm. Oh. Rolling into the cover on John Marty. Here's this going to be enough. And it is. Ethan Palmer picks up the win. This match started, believe it or not, as, as technical as they come. And just broke down into an all-out brawl. You take a look at the replays here throughout this match. Again, a couple of million dollar slams from John Marty. But it's Ethan Palmer with the victory. Ladies and gentlemen, coming up next, we're going to hear from Ethan, or excuse me, we're going to hear from Eric Anderson in regards to his match against Leroy Punch Beef from 2K CW a thon. I'll give credit to where credit is due. Leroy took me to my limit. He was a tougher opponent than I had anticipated. I gave everything I had in our title match. I gave my blood and sweat in that match. Some may consider blood is the sign of a true warrior that will continue to fight until it's done. And I proved that at 2KCW with Thon. I don't know if I can say the same for Leroy. So that's why I propose a rematch against Leroy Punch Beef and unfinished business at unfinished business in a first blood match for the 2K CW Heavyweight Championship. is certainly a interesting development to say the least that we may be getting a rematch for the 2KCW title at unfinished business for, between Eric Anderson and Leroy Punch Beef but coming up next ladies and gentlemen this is our main event and this is more or less to see who's going to be at the top of the food chain if you will in our women's division our two most winningest if that's even a word female competitors facing off you will see Cindy Danger taking on Dizzy Jet in our main event of course Cindy Danger's partner Paige Storm will be ringside for this match Paige Storm picked up a loss at 2KCW a thon Here's Dizzy Jet. If I had to guess, if we did have a women's championship here, I would suspect that Dizzy would definitely be one of the top names to be considered as the inaugural champion. And who knows what could be for the future of the women here in 2KCW or even for Dizzy Jet. But she could move on to the main roster of Reign of Chaos Wrestling. Or even get somebody from RCW to come down here to 2KCW. We may see that even happen on occasion. There's going to be Cindy Danger taking on Dizzy Jet in our main event.
Andy Danger going to work. And Dizzy Jet here, quick gut kick. Got her back up on her feet, collar and elbow tie up, and Dizzy getting the advantage. Let's see if we're going to get a clean break from Cindy Danger, and we are. That shot from Jet, same drop kick countered by Danger into the slam. Kick to the back, and it looks like this was pissed off Dizzy Jet. Up on her feet, gut kick, right cross, and another, and off the ropes into a backbreaker. And Dizzy Jack, crucifix bomb into the cover. Only a one count. Sure would be interesting to see any of these women go up against any of the stars in, two in Reign of Chaos Wrestling. Double under hook DDT from Dizzy Jet. Get to see Dizzy Jet square off against Mickey James or even Alexa Bliss. Dizzy Jet got Cindy on the top rope. Guillotine from a power bomb power slam position. And Dizzy Jet is just completely going to work here on Cindy Danger in the scarfold. Is it a side headlock from Danger? And Dizzy Jet to a running uppercut into the corner, into the cover. Only a one count. New Jersey native. Looking to get the fight back in this match, even though she's been dominant the whole time. Sunset flip bomb from Cindy Danger. Paige Storm still out on the outside. Not running interference. Yeah, elevated famous star. From Storm, from Danger. Cindy Danger going up to the top turnbuckle. And an elbow drop. Barely connecting onto Dizzy Jet. And now Storm again going up to the top turnbuckle. A high rent district. And into the go round. Cover here. The go round from Cindy Danger only allowing a two count. And Dizzy Jet, another uppercut. Into the corner. Innovative Lufthas press in the corner from Dizzy Jet into another European uppercut. And Dizzy Jet following it up into the disc track. And is that going to be enough to put away Cindy Danger in our main event? Two, three, Dizzy Jet picks up the win. And there you see the crucifix palm from D Cindy Danger, or Dizzy Jet, excuse me. Got me dizzy. I don't know who's who. There's the elevated f famous surf from Cindy Danger. So I guess this answers the question who's the dominant female in 2KCW and still with a winless record of undefeated record, I should say, is Dizzy Jet. Well, folks, that's going to do it for us this week here in 2KCW. We hope you all enjoyed the show, and we will see you next week. Possibly even a response from Leroy Punchbeef for Eric Anderson's challenge. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you right here next week on 2KCW.